walk around the compound. See you soon, tigers. Sheriff Baggy, where did this arctic blast of air, of ambient air come from? Where are you going? I need to share warmth. <laughs> what are you doing? You feeding some, you feeding the uh, uh, Cody? Lemurs and the Cody. L L Lemur and the Cody. Bindi. Noelle is going to feed the, the Cody or the Kawadi or however you pronounce that. But uh, she eats weird stuff like like marshmallows and raw eggs and like tuna fish mixed together. And and not even joking about the combination. That's, uh, you know, some of the weird stuff that uh, Bindi the Kawadi uh eats so yeah oh hello all you big cat lovers out there and welcome to another stellar and heartwarming episode of the walk around the compound webcast it's cold it's really really cold and i'm wearing shorts but that's my own dumb fault i don't understand why it is but i've got a little bit of a hat that i'm wearing it's probably not uh you know big enough for my head big head but you know it's festive and it does keep my head warm which that's actually the only reason why I grabbed this and I'm like oh it's gonna be really fun for the webcast it's like no it's the only thing that's close to the door I'm losing light and I gotta go Milo 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 oh it's feed day everyone is so excited they're seeing Noella walk over there and they're like ah she's heading towards the freezer that must mean that feed time is happening but uh, yeah, no, the weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, there were times I was out in t-shirt and shorts. It was beautiful weather outside. Kate, <laughs> hi, sugar pie. Beautiful weather outside. And then we had a cold front that pushed through last night, turned everything into chilly willy wonderland. So yeah, <gasps> sassafras, squeak. <laughs> yeah, you know you're good for it. So, yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember I walked out, you know, because before I go to work in the morning, like some of my, my morning duties, but after I make my coffee, of course, I feed the uh, llama and then I feed the babies. I give them their babas. And llama, she was outside uh, in, the, in the front of the house, in the north side of the house where the wind is coming from, not smart. She wasn't smart and going to the south end of the house to where it would be protected from the wind. No, she's just sitting there just mew, mew. Cause you know, llamas, they come from like places that are, you know, kind of cold, like the Andes mountains and stuff like that. So she's just hanging out in the front yard. And again, me and my, my stupid hat and you know, my shorts, uh, I, I take a bottle out there and she's just, just drinking the bottle at a leisurely pace. Just, le just, it's a fine morning we're having, aren't we? Yes. Oh, did you catch the football game yesterday? And I'm just like, Mama! Eat faster! I know, right? Yano, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Slow yamas in the morning when it's freezing? There's like nothing worse than that. It's like the worst thing ever. So yeah. Oh, it's a little bit breezy. It's a little bit chilly. A little, a little bit snuffly. Yeah, a little bit snuffly. Um, it's been a oh, it's been a while, you know, with like the new walk around the compound webcast schedule that we got going on, where I'm doing updates only on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Raven. Raven. Hi, where are you, Frisky? You're Frisky Pants. You're so Frisky. You're going through your your second your second youth. You know, she's kind of like an older lady. She's an older gal, and she's getting kind of all Frisky in her older age, and it's just adorable. We're gonna go and have a hot time on the town tonight. Oh, Kate. What sort of adorableness are you doing? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, no, everyone's digging the temperature and everyone's digging the fact that it's feed day right now, you know? So, yeah. But, um, yeah, it, you know, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've done that. Ah! It's been a while since I, it feels like it has been a while since I've done the webcast. Um, 
It was last Thursday. I just, you know, I, I start that camera rolling. Oh, more adorableness. There's so many rolling kitties. So many rolling kitties. But I feel like I start and hit that record button. And it's like, I don't even know if I know what I'm doing. I think I've forgotten how to webcast. I'm sure Editor Derek is saying really nasty things right now. He's kind of a jerk. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. Saw the 60 minute special last night on Kevin Richardson. That was really good. That was really good. Didn't know how that was gonna, you know, turn out. But uh, they did a good job. He did a great job. Um, <laughs> hi, hello. But yeah, I was talking about the issues of, uh, you know, lion cubs in South Africa and how they oftentimes get uh, uh, sold into places that are canned hunts. And um, it was just a, a really well-made story. And um, he's really great at, you know, what he does as far as working with his cats and marketing himself. And uh, yeah, they did a, did a really, really good job of just presenting of presenting that, I thought. So, kudos to, to Mr. Richardson and the 60 Minutes team. Lions! It's all about the lions, isn't it? Roar, 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 roar. But, uh, yeah. I like the fact that uh, one of the things, one of the things, and I, I thought that was really impressive and just classy, because, I mean, you know, he's, he's very, very well known for what he does. He's the, you know, he's the Lion Whisperer. Um, but he still is a very uh, uh, down-to-earth kind of guy, or so it seems. You know, in his interview, because he even said, like, look, there are other people out there who work with these animals and who interact with them as uh, specifically and as, as, as intimately as I do. So he even said, like, it's not like I invented this stuff. Um, and, uh, you know... That was a, I thought that that was a really cool thing because uh, in this world, in this whole big cat world, there can be, sometimes there can be a little bit of ego and buffoonery. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, doing content all based on just self-interest and acting just like a foolish person. I mean, this is silly. Why would they do that? It's dumb. But uh, no, the fact that... Uh, uh, you know, the fact that, uh, he's given the nod to, to other folks and saying that, you know, there's other folks out there doing good things. I thought that that was, I thought that was really awesome. <laughs> um, so, yeah, everyone's excited. Everyone's so excited. Oh my gosh. And my hand is so cold. Oh, my hand is so cold. Oh, we had a huge day. I gotta hold, I, I do have to hold it because it gets too shaky gets too wobbly. No, 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 everyone is just so, so hungry. Everyone is just so hungry, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, hi. Everyone is just so hungry, is they're active and they're noisy and they're singing and they're doing stuff. <laughs> Mr. Flashman. Mr. Flashman, oh my gosh, I have to hold this with my other hand because I gotta put this in my pocket. Whew. I got the frosty nips on my fingers. Oh God, why did I say that? Like Jack Frost nipping, Jack Frost nipping. That's what I was trying to go for. Yeah, oh man, my nips are so frosty. Woo! Could, could cut construction paper with them. <laughs> Hi, Zeus. Hi, Zeus. Are you interested in my frosty nips? <laughs> my fingers. That's so stupid. That's so stupid. Why did I say that? Um, I'm going to talk about some more stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, turn the camera off and then turn it back on so I have some more time. So, yeah. Frosty nips. Brain, why? Why must you say these things sometimes? Uh, 
I just want to understand. I heard that they got- Oh my goodness, you're coming into the lockdown. This is such a rare thing. Boo Bear does not like coming into the lockdown. No, she does not. Historically speaking, she has always been very opposed to coming into the lockdown. So this is a rare treat indeed. She just doesn't like it. She just will still stand at that door and she just stares just... I'm not going in there. You know. Just for a long time. Just sits there. <sighs> You're gonna convince me. But, um, yes. I want to talk, um, about something that I think is very important. Uh, talking about some of the different things that, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, the, the, the different stuff about animals in captivity and animals in sanctuaries and uh, how that can help, you know, the uh, conservation efforts out in the wild. Because I, I've actually talked to different, you know, lion and tiger conservation organizations. I've sent emails and I've said, like, look, I've got some, I've got a voice. I've got, you know, things on different social media platforms. Uh, I've got ready-made audiences uh, that would be very interested in some of these issues. I could, you know, help you out. I could be a voice. And, and some of these people, they, and I understand where they're coming from. But they basically said, like, thanks, but no thanks. Because... You're part of the sanctuary world, and we're looking more for like the wildlife conservation, um, you know, type type world, and 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 nary shall those two worlds mix. Um, which I mean, again, I understand what it is like where they're coming from, but I I think that it's kind of the wrong way to look at things, um, and I definitely do think that there are a lot of ways in which uh, captive populations and the insights that we can learn from these captive populations can absolutely impact uh, wildlife conservation and wild uh, population growth. And one of the ways that I really think is gonna be important and ways that I think that we're gonna be able to, uh, to possibly help out is by uh, the work that we have been doing recently uh, with, uh, with genetics, with big cat genetics. Um, we work with uh, uh, these uh, two co-researchers, uh, Brian Davis from the National Institute of Health and Dr. Jan Janica from Duquesne University, and they are both felid geneticists. And they are actually, right now, in the process of trying to collect as many samples of uh, big cat genetics uh, here, at least in the United States to start off with, possibly branching out further. Um, but uh, they're trying to collect as many uh, samples of big cat genetics as they possibly can because uh, they really actually want to create one of the world's largest repositories of that information. And they've already collected hundreds of samples. Uh, just, you know, blood, hair, tissue, mostly uh, blood. That's the best way for them to be able to get information. Um, but they are able to do some some pretty amazing uh, things for uh, potential future generations uh, by by gathering this information. Um, and one of the big things about doing this type of project and doing this type of project now is that there is still a relatively robust population of big cats here in captivity in the United States and they want to try to collect as many samples as possible while we still have access and availability to these animals because you know even in captivity the numbers are you know they're they're not as robust as what they uh, were, or at least the rates of reproduction are not as robust as what they probably were, especially like in the, in the 90s, in the 80s. There's a lot of breeding going on with big cats. Um, but, uh, different things as far as, uh, uh, learning about health and med medicinal insights, um, learning about, uh, uh, the, the health and the viability of populations. And, and this gets into some really crazy sci-fi territory that those guys didn't, they, you know, like this is me kind of thinking that this stuff, but I truly do think that uh, as our technological prowess actually uh, progresses, 
over the next 10, 20, 30 years, uh, who knows, maybe the base genetic data, the blueprints of these animals is going to be enough to then uh, possibly even recreate these animals uh, for maybe like a future rewilding type thing. Now, that is like some crazy borderline sci-fi uh, type stuff, but it is within the realm of theoretical plausibility. And I did ask them that, if that is in the realm of theoretical, and they're like, look, there's a lot of things that that we're, we're you know, finding out. It, it's Who's to say that 20, 30, 40, 50 years, we're not gonna be able to make, uh, you know, test tube kitty cats, put them back into the wild once we, you know, kind of clean up our acts, so to speak. Um, so I think that being able to collect a large enough sampling of these animals' genetics is paramount. And doing it now, doing it now while we actually still have availability to larger amounts. So I'm going to end this webcast by putting a call out there. And I'm going to be talking about this more on my different platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Vine, all sorts of different types of stuff. But I want to start talking about this more. And I want to direct more people towards the project that these individuals are doing. Anyone out there who subscribes to my content, if you have access to big cats, whether they be private ownership, whether they be performing animals, whether it be uh, uh, traveling, petting shows, whether it be zoos accredited, whether it be sanctuaries, whether it be whatever. If you have access to big cats, then consider being a part of this program because the more information that we have now, the greater the chance of uh, success and survival that these animals have in the future. It really is all about numbers. The more we have, the better the shot these guys have. Information below. Please, please consider it. And that's the end of the webcast.